just want to introduce to you Ahmad Qureshi from New Jersey DOT. He's one of the project managers for this effort from the department side. Um, we also have uh, Jim Hogan from Advantage Engineering uh, assisting us, as well as uh, Peter Drinkwater from TNM Associates. Uh, there are other people in the room from DOT as well. Uh, we have um, Bill Kingsland and uh, Wasit Mercer. Um, they're pretty much the head of uh, traffic um, systems ITS group. Uh, we're also um, honored to have with us tonight uh, Dana Heck. And Dana is um, one of the heads of uh, capital program management. So she oversees all of the design uh, uh, at DOT. So with that, I'm going to uh, hand it off to our uh, consultant. They're going to go through a, a brief presentation. And uh, you know we'll take some questions as well. All right, thanks everyone. Uh, again, my name is Peter Drinkwater from TNM Associates. We're a consulting firm working for the department on this project. Um, so we have a brief slideshow that we'll go through to talk about our Route 1 project that we have. So this is a project that uh, the department's been working with South Brunswick on for um, several years at this point. And the goal is to try to work on some of the traffic congestion issues that are occurring in, uh, in on alone Route 1 within South Brunswick. So there's about 6.6 .6 miles Route 1 crosses through South Brunswick Township. Only about 1.2 miles has three lanes in each direction. Uh, but as all of you know, there are three lanes are provided in each direction uh, to the majority of the communities located to the north and the south. So there's a, a definitely a bottleneck of traffic. And as uh, the lady over there mentioned, it's like an hourglass situation where the, the lanes net down um, from three to two, uh, creating all this congestion. So a goal of the project here is to evaluate different options to improve the traffic uh, flow through South Brunswick and try to reduce the travel time through the corridor. Okay. So this is just an overall plan that shows the limits of South Brunswick. It looks like there's 10 traffic signals within South Brunswick. Uh, you'll see a slide later on that kind of highlights the areas that we're going to focus on as part of this pilot study. So a little bit of project history. Um, we've been working with South Brunswick uh, since probably late 2000 or maybe early 2015. Uh, TNM Associates as well as Advanced Engineering we've been working on a tier two screening project for the department that we started back in April of 2015. We've shared that data and that report with South Brunswick got lots of good feedback. Uh, so those, uh, how many meetings we've actually had with South Brunswick? It's been quite a few over the last couple of years. Uh, Four or five, probably. Yeah. Four or five. Um, we decided that we were going to advance this as a pilot project, uh, and that was decided back in June of last year. Uh, since that time, we've been working on the design, some of the plans you see up here, um, and we've wrapped up the design portion of that back in March, and we're looking to implement this uh, once school is out in June. Okay, so some of the options uh, to improve traffic flow on Route 1. Uh, Number one, the thing that everyone talks about is to widen Route 1. What can we do to widen it to make three lane consistent through uh, the whole South Brunswick corridor? Uh, the issue with that is we'd have to widen about five feet on each side of the roadway, which doesn't sound like a lot. Uh, but to widen five feet uh, is a huge construction cost. There's a cost to acquire property along the entire length of Route 1. Uh, significant utility relocations. There's large aerial electric facilities on both sides of the roadway. And there's also the environmental issues, wetlands and flood hazard area permitting that would have to be done. So it was a very significant project, something that the department wasn't ready to move forward with at this time. So we were looking at other, uh, other options to see that we can uh, try to improve the traffic flow. So the next idea is just to convert the shoulder to a lane. Uh, that would be the easiest thing to do. However, uh, the outside shoulder is only about 10 feet wide, which is too narrow for traffic, particularly with all the driveways that are located on Route 1. And also the, the pavement condition of the shoulder is variable. There's some areas where the pavement's thick enough to support traffic, other areas where it's not really uh, sufficient. So a lot of work would have to be done in order to uh, strengthen the shoulder. So the concept that was decided upon is uh, the concept of hard shoulder running. Hard shoulder running, you could also call it temporary shoulder use. Uh, the goal is to increase the capacity through rope one through the conversion of the outside shoulders into temporary travel lanes. Okay? Uh, this concept is used extensively on freeways in Europe. Um, it's starting to get limited use in the United States on freeways. 
uh, several roads in Massachusetts, uh, Interstate 66 in Virginia, also <coughs> State Highway in Washington. Um, from the NJDOT side, it's currently implemented on Route 29 in Trenton. Um, if you're coming off 195, heading toward 129, you'll see the signs for that. Um, it's also used on Route 9 in Old Bridge, um, not for cars, but for bus only, so it's a bus only shoulder. Um, and it's also currently used on the Turnpike Extension um, as a result of the work on the Pulaski Skyway. Again, some more common features. It's typically only used on freeways or limited access highways. Uh, Route 1 is not a limited access highway. Route 1 has numerous driveways, signalized intersections. Um, so that's something that as we move forward with this, and that's why we're doing this as a pilot study, uh, we're really concerned about all those drivers and how that, uh, that traffic's gonna interact with the traffic in the main line. Um, another feature of typical uh, hard shoulder running project is that they will have emergency pull-offs. So now that the shoulder is being used, if you break down, you need somewhere to go. Um, on these freeway applications, you'll typically see uh, breakdown lanes every half a mile. Um, in addition to that, uh, there are extensive intelligent transportation system facilities, cameras, as well as dynamic message signs indicating whether or not the shoulders are open or closed. Uh, and typically, uh, the shoulders are anywhere from 10 to 14 feet on, again, these limited access highways. For a project like this with many driveways, we don't think 10 feet is sufficient to have uh, vehicles and trucks point on and off we feel that they would encroach into the next lane. So that's another feature to go to. This is an example of a typical section uh, roadway that was used for the project in Washington on the State Route 2. Um, and it shows in the top picture, uh, it shows the existing condition where you have two lanes of traffic. Um, and then what they ended up doing for this when they implemented the hard shoulder running, they restriped the roadway, adjusting the width of the shoulders and the width of each of the lanes to provide room for the right shoulder. You can see that truck located in that right shoulder there. So that's a similar approach that we're going to try on Route 1. This is the project uh, in Virginia on uh, Interstate 66. It shows an example of some of the uh, ITS facilities that are in place. You can see that there are dynamic signs that have a, like a red X or a green arrow, whether or not indicating that the shoulder is open or closed, um, in addition to static signs along the side of the highway. Another feature they did on route on Interchange 66 is that they actually painted the roadway. Um, this shoulder is was painted red to further delineate the uh, hard shoulder operation. And this is in New Jersey on the Route 9. The, the picture on top is the bus on shoulder operation. It's kind of hard to see here, but uh, there was specialized striping on the pavement that was used. Um, and again, that's really just for buses. And the lower picture is Route 29. Um, and you can see it's the static sign there that indicates that the shoulder is open to traffic during uh, peak hour periods. Okay, so we did a lot of studies along the Route 1 corridor, measured the roadway width, try to figure out uh, the best approach to this uh, hard shoulder running operation. Um, and the way the main thing we came down to is at the bottom that the half width of the roadway in the narrower sections on Route 1 is about 37 feet wide, and that allows for a three foot wide left shoulder up against the median barrier, then two 12-foot lanes, and then a 10-foot right shoulder. So some of the challenges to implementing the hard shoulder running on Route 1 are the signalized intersections that are located. Uh, there are 10 within South Brunswick. And the issue here is that we're going to have, if we open this up to traffic, all the vehicles that are coming from these sides, from Raymond Road, Ridge Road, whatever it is, they're going to have to be made aware that the shoulder is open to them, or, or if it's closed. So that's one of the things to, when we implement this on a freeway section, there are the large overhead signs. Everybody that enters the roadway has a clear indication on whether or not the shoulder is open. Uh, this, is a, this will be one of the challenges that we have for this project. Uh, we propose to solve that with various signs that you see on the display board over there. And then probably the main concern we have are the numerous driveways. Um, in this picture here, you can see, hopefully you can see a vehicle trying to pull out onto Route 1. Um, right now, that vehicle has a shoulder to utilize before he merges onto Route 1, or she. Um, when we open this up to traffic, though, that, depending on the time of day, that vehicle will have to merge directly onto Route 1. So that could cause some uh, conflicting movements with vehicles, and we are concerned about the potential for additional crashes but that's something that we're looking into as part of this study. The other issue I mentioned before is the 
condition of the shoulder pavement. Typically, the shoulder pavement's not as thick as the mainline pavement, so we did a pavement evaluation along all of South Brunswick to identify those sections of the shoulder that couldn't support traffic. Um, and what we actually recommended are several sections, actually one section is part of this project, that we're gonna have to mill and resurface the roadway uh, five inches deep uh, in order to provide enough uh, structural support for the traffic. <coughs> so in our discussions with South Brunswick, we decided to try this out as a pilot project and we're not gonna implement it through all of South Brunswick. We're gonna limit it to a two, about a two mile section of uh, Route 1, which is about a third of the length of Route 1 within South Brunswick. And it's gonna be located from Independence Way to Raymond Road. There's about 20 driveways along that section, along with two signalized intersections. Um, as part of the temporary improvements that we're gonna uh, construct soon are gonna be shoulder pavement strengthening that I mentioned. Uh, we're going to restripe Route 1. We're going to install numerous signs along the corridor. Uh, we're going to implement IPS cameras that we'll speak about in a few minutes. And we're going to open this up. The shoulder is not going to be permanent, so it's going to be open to traffic only during the peak hours, which we've identified as from 6 in the morning to 9, and then from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m., and that's going to be during the week only. At all other times, it'll be closed to traffic, and it'll be enforced by South Brunswick Police. Again, this just shows the limits of where we're going to focus this pilot project, which is the southerly section of uh, South Brunswick. And this shows the area, there's about a third of a mile where we're going to re, uh, mill and resurface the roadway in order to support the traffic. We're going to restrike the roadway. Uh, the inner shoulder is going to be reduced from three feet down to one feet. We're going to provide three 12 foot wide lanes. And we're not going to resurface the roadway, so all we're going to do is grind out the existing stripes and repaint the new stripes. This is an example of what the roadway uh, looks like today, and then we'll show an after that shows what's going to be during uh, the hard shoulder running pilot project. This is also on the display board here. It's a little bit hard to see here. Uh, so if you can just back up for a second and slide back. So with the existing condition, if you look all the way to the left, you'll see that there's two lanes in each direction on Route 1. And then if you're heading northbound, which is to the right, uh, the roadway opens up as a deceleration lane for the intersection with Raymond Road. And then on the southbound side, as you come through the intersection uh, near the gas station there, that third lane tapers down to two lanes. So in our proposed condition, you see the striping has changed a little bit. Uh, you see a lot more dashed striping, which is sort of the, the preferred treatment for temporary uh, shoulder projects. Uh, again, it's probably a lot easier to see on the board up here. Uh, these are examples of some of the signs that we're going to install along the roadway. They're also on the board here. Um, what's important is the sign all the way to the left, the one with the yellow caution sign. That sign is going to be posted on each of the driveways that enters Route 1 so that everyone pulling out of a driveway is going to see that sign and be made aware that the shoulder will be open uh, during those peak hours. I now I turn it over to Jim. Uh, he's going to talk about some of the IPS improvements. Is that proposed? Thank you. Jim Hogan with Vantage Engineering Associates. Uh, we were brought on to help with the IPS design. So throughout the project limits, the, the, the challenge here was the project was going to be done pretty quick. The pavement, the striping, that doesn't take too long. Um, constructing the IPS, Intelligent Transportation System, the wires, the communications, takes a lot longer than the pavement. So we came up with a uh, short-term solution. Uh, first of all, the first camera, permanent high-resolution camera at Independence Way, New Jersey DOT upgraded uh, camera there. So that kind of takes care of the southern part of the limits. Uh, we're also going to include eight cameras that will actually be connected to the utility pole. They're not real high because of the uh, high voltage lines above them, but we have eight of them throughout the project. So the goal is South Brunswick Police, as well as NJDOT operations, will be able to monitor that shoulder lane. So if there is a breakdown, if there is an accident, they should be able to detect it relatively quick and get the police out there and you know, hopefully get it cleared out. Uh, there's also going to be you know, two or four BMS, portable BMS, I forget now. I think it's four. Four portable dynamic message signboards that are remote controllable. So they'll be able to change the message from the operation center, if need be, uh, during construction of same signs. 
We'll let motorists know that there's lane closures in place to do the work. So there will be cameras, uh, camera views throughout the approximately two mile limit for this project. Uh, part of the study we're going to do before and after study will include looking at traffic volumes. If we add this third lane, volumes should go up, or at least stay the same, but probably go up, throughput should go up. Um, we can also measure the department, New Jersey DOT actually has a contract with a vendor, and they can measure travel times through this area. The limits are a little larger than the area of this project, so it'll give them a good idea of before and after uh, traffic uh, travel times going northbound and going southbound. And then we're also going to be looking at the uh, crash data. South Brunswick Police has already pulled together their accident data from last year, from June to December of 2016, and we'll compare that from June to December of 2016. Oh, seven. Um, I believe I wasn't sure, Bill Kingsland or Wasif, if you wanted to add to the uh, traffic operations, ITS equipment, and <coughs> other things that I... One of the things that gets brought up to, uh, to our attention is that we are doing a similar uh, shoulder running situation on uh, 29, you mentioned coming off of 295 uh, access and people heading up into Trenton in the morning. This is a little different, actually. This is very different. Uh, being a, uh, a, a local roadway, unlimited access with the, the, the driveways, side streets and everything, and we don't have the ability to monitor the traffic that we do on 29. Jim mentioned the cameras that are going out there. There are eight temporary cameras that are going out there in addition to the upgrade that we did to the Independence Avenue camera. My staff that works at the Statewide Traffic Management Center up in Woodbridge will be very closely monitoring these cameras during the period of the hard shoulder running. Uh, we're going to develop a very close relationship with South Brunswick Police um, and it's going to be a two-way relationship. We need them, their eyes out on the roadway and our eyes will be on the roadway. And together, if we see a problem, obviously if somebody breaks down, if debris gets on the road, uh, if there's an accident, something like that, we need to, to be in real close communication to let them know what's happening so that we can get that off the road and reestablish the, the shoulder and the shoulder operation. So I think that's going to be the critical long-term component is that communications and, and to make that uh, a priority with both sides to be able to make it work. And that's where uh, this is, like I said, unique for the department uh, that we're going to have such a close operational relationship with the, with the police department out there. But we're committed to do that. It's also unique for the country, which is very exciting. Yeah. For this project. Yeah. Uh, nowhere in the country have we put something like this on an arterial signalized roadway. So. Uh, doing this for a few months, uh, being able to evaluate its success, or if so, its failure, um, yeah. hopefully we can move forward. I don't expect it to, no, not at all. Um, you know, we can look to expand and, and we can also make sure, you know, that the, our experiences get out to others and uh, this hopefully will be done in other places throughout the country. All right, so one of the things that uh, we'll just spoke about is uh, the monitoring aspect of this project. And when we first looked into hard shoulder running through throughout all of South Brunswick, so the whole six mile segment, we projected some of the travel time savings that we could hope to, to get uh, through the success of the project. And uh, we came up with approximately about four or so minutes of each person. Uh, that, minute, that four minute me reduction means for each, if you're in your car starting South Brunswick at the southerly edge, you're going to get to South Brunswick four minutes quicker, and that's going to apply to every car during the peak hour. So that adds up a significant amount of uh, you know, save time. You could uh, <laughs> spend more time working with that. <laughs> so to evaluate the success of the project, um, if this is successful, in our minds it may be successful, but in order to uh, get additional funding, 
uh, the department is going to look to get some federal funding for this project moving forward, we're going to have to prove to the federal government that this is a successful project. So the way we're going to do that is to perform a benefit cost analysis. So we're going to compare the benefits of the project versus the cost of the project. So on the benefit side, like I just mentioned, uh, we're hoping that there's reduced travel time through the corridor. Everyone's time is worth money, so we can add up that uh, value over uh, whatever uh, you know, duration we anticipate, whether to project out a 10-year life cycle or 20 years, whatever that is. Um, as Jimmy mentioned, that um, having the extra capacity, we can expect more vehicles to get through South Brunswick. So there will be more throughput, again, more traffic getting through. Um, there will be a benefit that there will be reduced vehicle emissions, there are fewer delays out there, so the environmental air quality um, can be expected to increase. On the cost side, uh, there is a construction cost associated with it, um, and most importantly is the potential for additional crashes. So that's something we're going to monitor during the cycle, life cycle of this project. And when we prepare that, we're going to share that with South Brunswick, um, and I'm sure that will be public as well. So some of the next steps, uh, we're going to start the construction of the improvements for the pilot project. Um, by around the end of the month, I don't know if that's still an accurate date, we still going to have that time frame. Um, so the pavement work, the striping, the cameras, signage, uh, by May 30th is when we're looking, looking to start that. That's going to be done primarily at night, right? I love some work during the day, but mostly at night. Uh, variable message signs will be placed during that construction. That's going to alert vehicles about the construction as well as the uh, impending start of the hard shoulder running operation. And then we're looking to start the hard shoulder running June 26th, which is after school is out and so the summer vacation started. And we're going to monitor it for approximately six months at least, and we'll see how it goes. And after that time, we'll evaluate the permanent improvements. It for the slideshow if anyone has any additional comments, Dana. Yeah, before okay. we get to questions, I'm Dana Heck, I'm the Director of Project Management. Um, we, we're talking about monitoring accidents, but we're doing more than that. We are proactively planning to avoid accidents as much as possible. We said we do have a baseline, thanks to South Brunswick Police, of what's currently out there, so that we can assess if there are accidents. Is that the norm? Are they increased? Maybe they'll even go down. Signage is being changed at the end of the driveways from heels to stops, along with the warning signs of the hours of usage. Um, there is, this project is unique in many aspects. You have representatives for many areas of the department here, the capital side, the operation and maintenance side, the traffic systems mobility side, and we have had a lot of communication with South Brunswick. We are all working together. We don't usually have these many areas, even within the department, working together on a project. And South Brunswick has been very, very helpful and proactively communicative with us as well. So I'm, I'm very excited for this. Like I said, it is it's first in the country for a roadway like this. So we want to be successful. You know, we were trendsetters with the Jersey Barrier. So hopefully we can be <laughs> trendsetters with this. And uh, again, yes, we'll be monitoring accidents, but doing outreach, uh, uh, change, advanced warning signs. I believe even during construction, BMS signs are going to be utilized to warn motorists that this is coming. So I just wanted to clarify that uh, we are being proactive as well. I'll, I'll just add one comment that in addition to the uh, National aspect of it, if it is successful. Today we live in a small world, and so it can have international uh, uh, repercussions as well. I was uh, listening to Dana, I, I was just reminded of the New Jersey barrier. I was in Pakistan some years back, and one of the engineers, he was talking about. New Jersey barrier in Pakistan. That's that's what they call it because that's the name of that uh, barrier that was started here in New Jersey. So maybe we can uh, this Jersey, Jersey shoulder. New Jersey high shoulder. Yeah, that's right. Jersey shoulder. South Brunswick. South Brunswick. Yes. On the critical times that you wouldn't want to have an accident or the need for trucks and first aid to have to go on do one would be from 6 a.m. to 9 and from 4 to 6. 
but should there be a need for fire trucks, first aid, and any rescue vehicles, um, what do you anticipate needing to do if all the lanes are taken up? I'll answer it, but I mean, it's much like any other roadway without a shoulder. Just several miles south of here, there's a stretch of Route 1 without a shoulder. I mean, with their lights and sirens, they're typically going to be able to get through any kind of traffic. Hopefully. I mean, I'd let the lieutenant, if you'd like to uh, respond. Yeah, I'm Frank Lombardo uh, with the department here in the traffic bureau. Uh, the same as any other lane, the response time would be the same. There's traffic there now. Actually, the traffic is worse now because it's down to two lanes. So with the opening of the three lanes, there'll be more throughput, there'll be less backups, the less queue, you know, people in line. So the, uh, the response time will be identical. You know, if not better, it should be better because traffic will be moving more. Mm -hmm. it's, it's similar to Route 27 now. <clears throat> we have the same issue there. And these were the types of discussions that we had as well. Like I said, there's been a lot of communication and a lot of proactivity. And I do want to clear one thing up that you mentioned. Did the pick notice said four to six, but it's definitely can you four talk to seven. Louder? Excuse me? Can you talk four to seven? Did, did the notice for today said uh, four to six, but it's four to seven? Four to seven. Yes, it's definitely four to seven. Thank you. So as a resident of South Brunswick, I really want this project to work. Because <laughs> <laughs> the uh, traffic congestion is just, just ridiculous. Um, so if this is successful, are you looking to make this permanent of just those times or just throughout the day or even expanding it through other areas of South Brunswick? And how can um, residents of South Brunswick give feedback to the Department of Transportation? Well, feedback would always go through our Office of Community Relations, Fred, and I don't know if you have cards. Yep. Will there be information provided for the public? The yeah. As far as whether um, permanency and hours and things as such, we would reconvene as a group, the group that has that planned this, and we would look at the results, of the throughput, the travel, the accidents, and make those types of decisions. Whether it should, I would assume at this point that it would just stay the peak hours. That's what Route 20, that's what Route 29 is, but. When we do our capital project, it goes through a planning process, even if you had a pilot. So we would still have a planning process and look at different alternatives. Thank you. Some of, the, with some of the travel speed data that's available now can actually look and see what Saturdays and Sundays look like. In the past, it'd be hard. You'd have to have a traffic engineer drive up and down the road or listen to a lot of complaints that it's backed up. But now there's data being collected through the department 24 seven so they can see how long it takes to go from point A to point B. So there's spikes at different times perhaps in the future, but it's kind of like baby steps to start the pilot project now. I just want to mention, um, yeah, so at any time folks can reach out to me um, on the community relations. I actually cover like five counties in New Jersey, um, but I cover this area. But as was mentioned by several people, I mean, we're, we're in extensive dialogue and extensive communication with South Brunswick, with the county. So we'll be, you know, having constant communication. So if there are issues and they're expressed, whether they come through DOT or they come through South Brunswick or the county, you know, we'll, we'll hear it and we'll, uh, you know, we'll see how we can address it. So, you know, we'll sort of pitch in together and try to successful project. We, we all want it to be successful. Every person in this room 